In this video, we are going to discuss data model design and will present three critical tips you should know while designing your model. In the previous video, PP04, we discussed the calendar tables and we see three different ways to create a calendar table using dynamic array functions, using Power Query, and automatically create a calendar table inside the Power Pivot window. And also we discussed how to integrate calendar tables inside data models. In this video, PP05, we are going to discuss five topics, how to design a data model, how to add measures and build a report, and also three critical tips around designing data models. First one, how to hide columns from client tool. Second, how to sort by column. And finally, how to update calendar tables. Let's start by checking our data that we're going to use in our example for today. Our data is coming in three Excel files. First one called all sales. It contains the sales data for three years. Also, we have the lookup tables and it is also three different lookup tables describing the products, the channel, and also the regions. And finally, the sales data for year 2019. In all sales, we have the sales data for 2016 up to 2018, and we'll add another year at end of our exercise. First one is all sales. You can notice that we have three tabs. Each and every one has a full year of sales data starting 2016 up to 2018, and data coming, as you can see in some columns. First one, the sales rep ID, and we're not going to use this one, but we're going to use the product ID, channel ID, segment ID, region ID, date, quantity, and the discount. If you look at our lookup tables, we have three different lookup tables. First one, starting with the product. We have the product ID, the name of the product, category, price, and the commission points. And this one, we are going to drop for the purpose of this exercise. The second lookup table for the region, it only contains two columns. First one is the region name, and also the region ID. Last one is the channel. It contains also two columns, channel name and the channel ID. In order to start our model designing, I'm going to start from a new workbook, a blank workbook, and I'm going to connect to those Excel files, the three Excel files that we already presented using the Power Query. So I'm going to the data ribbon, from data ribbon, get data from file, from Excel workbook. Here is my folder. I'm going to start with the all sales file, import. I have the three sheets, 2016 up to 2018. I can just select any one and preview the data as you can see, but I need all together. I need to append all the three sheets together. So I'm going to select the header, which is basically the all sales file itself. And I'm going to transform data in order to open the Power Query editor. On the right hand side, I have the name of the query coming from the name of the Excel sheet. I'm going to just delete the XLSX, so the all sales will be a suitable name for this query. And you can see I have the three sheets here. If you want to preview the data inside the Power Query Editor, I have the data in this column, table, table, table. And if you check any one of them, I'm going to check by selecting the empty space next to the word table. If you look downstairs, you'll see all the data that you have inside this table, the 2016 table, and same for 2017 and also 2018. You can notice that the headers is not promoted. If you want to promote the headers before expanding the data, you can go back to the excel.workbook function that's used in order to connect to this Excel workbook. And I'm going to change this null into true. I'm going to write true. And if you do the uh, check mark here and preview the data one more time, you will see that the headers is promoted. Now it's safe to expand the data. I'm going to select the data column, right click, and remove other columns. Now I can use the expand button. I need to expand all, not really. I'm going to skip the sales rep ID, no need for it now. And also the segment ID I'm not going to use. And I'm going to check the use original column name as prefix. I'm going to uncheck and click on OK you'll see all the data expanded correctly. I need to change data type. I need to do all uh, at once. I need to do all the data types for every column at once. I'm going to select transform. 
from transform detect data type it will check data type and change all of them automatically for you let's check the data types after the change one two three one two three one two three for the channel id product id and region id this is okay date type for the date that's fine quantity one two three whole number that's fine one two two for discount which is okay is decimal number which is okay for the discount i can just go to home and close and load but i can add more queries from this window before loading all together so i'm going to the empty space here right click new query from file and from excel workbook the second excel workbook will be the lookup tables i'm going to select import this will trigger the navigator i have the three sheets here this time i need a separate query for each and every uh, excel sheet here uh, so i'm going to select multiple items and i'm going to check the three uh, tables or the three sheets and then click on ok three queries will be created automatically let's check one by one i'm going to start by region the name of the query is region that's fine i have the source excel.workbook that's fine navigation we selected only one sheet promote headers that's fine and change type and the change type is okay for me let's check the product same same i have four steps each and every one is okay for me the name is good and also data types is okay no problem i can just drop this one no need for this one right click and remove channel two columns data types is okay the name of the query is fine everything looks good i can just close and load all the queries together so from home on the left hand side close and load close and load two from the import data window i'm going to select only create connection and this magic button or magic checkbox add this to data model and click on ok so the four queries will be loaded directly to the data model now all queries loaded to the data model i can check my data model now from the data ribbon i can go to data tools and i'm going to use this green icon in order to trigger the power pivot window you can see that i have the all sales the channel product and region if you want to look at them in a diagram view no problem i can select diagram view and here you go you have your four tables all loaded together now i want to design my model let's think together about the tables that we have we have one transaction table which is all sales containing the sales transactions for three years i have three lookup tables channel product and region quickly i can think about the star schema i have in the heart of the star the all sales or the transaction table and on each and every side of this star i can put one of my lookup tables and i'm going to build the relations between them the relations all the relations will be one to many relation coming from the lookup table and going to the transaction table so let's start by the region i have here the region id and also in all sales i have a region id so i think this is the good column to have the relation based on so i'm going to select the region id from the lookup table and i'm going to drag up till the region id inside the all sales table and i'm going to release my hand and here you go you have the one side of the relation coming from the lookup table going to the transaction table let me do the same for the product product id and i'm going to join it with the product id inside the all sales same same for the channel the channel id are going to connect to the channel id inside the all sales table and here you go you have your star schema i think now my design is going good however i need also a calendar table and based on what we did in the last video we are going to use the power pivot window itself in order to automatically create a calendar table inside this data model in order to do so i'm going to the design tab and from the calendars i have date table and i'm going to select new automatically it will create a new calendar table i can view the columns of this uh, calendar table inside the data view so i can go back to home and then data view and let's check our columns i have a column for the date it starts with 1st of january 2016 and i'm sure it ends with 31st december 2018 the last date inside this data model i have also a column for the year which is fine i have a column for the month number I have a column for the month name it's okay but i i think it's better to have it in three letters instead of having the full name for the month so i can go to the formula bar and change the four m's here into only three m's and hit enter and here you go the short name for the month i have 
month and year together this one is good as well i have the day of week number which is fine also i have the name of the day week i can replace the full name of the day by uh, the abbreviation of three letters so i can change the uh, four d's into only triple d and enter let's go back to diagram view and here is the calendar table the final brick of my star schema i'm going to place it here and i'm going to join it or connected with the all sales i'm going to create a relation again i want to many relation between the calendar table and the all sales table and this can be obviously done through the date column between both of the tables. so i'm going to select the date inside the calendar table i'm going to drag until i reach the date column inside the all sales i'm going to release my click and here you go you have your complete star schema you have a very good design for your model and you can start to build your reports and also to add your calculated measures let's have a quick look at our tables now i have my all sales table containing all transactions you can notice that i have dates i have quantity and i have only discount there is no price here the price resides inside the product table you have the price here so i need the information from both tables in order to calculate the revenue because my reports will be based on the revenue in order to do so i need to add a calculated measure and this calculated measure is going to use one of the most famous iterator functions or iterator dex functions which is SumX. so let's go directly to our data view and i'm going to select the all sales table and down here inside the measure grid i'm going to calculate my first measure let me call it revenue and then colon and then equal sum x here is our function sum x needs a table and the table obviously will be the all sales table so i'm going to write all and then s the first choice is all sales double click and then comma and then it needs an expression you can notice here the screen tip i can add an expression in order to iterate over the all sales table in order to calculate the revenue i need to start with the quantity so i'm going to use the all sales again but this time i'm going to select the quantity column and then i'm going to multiply this i'm going to multiply this by one minus discount so i'm going to open a bracket one minus and then again all sales but this time i'm going to select the discount column close the bracket and then i need to bring the prices from the product table so i'm going to add another asterisk and in this case i need to bring information from the product table so i'm going to use a function called related this function is basically the vlookup used inside the dax so the related will go and bring the suitable line for each and every product id i have here inside the all sales table so i'm going to use this time the product and also the column price close the bracket for related and then close the bracket for the sum x and hit enter here you go you have the revenue measure calculated down here i can add some number formatting let me use the english United states the currency and i'm going to reduce the decimal places to zero and also i can add here another measure for the quantity i can just add or sum the quantity so let's add something like total q for total quantity colon and then equal and i'm going to use the simple sum function i need a column for this sum function it will be basically the all sales quantity close the bracket and hit enter let's add also some number formatting i'm going to use the thousand separator and also to reduce the decimal places to zero and i'm now ready to start to build my report in order to build a pivot table report inside my excel worksheet i can just go to the home ribbon and here i can use the pivot table icon it will prompt me back to the excel sheet i'm going to use inside the existing worksheet and inside the cell a1 no problem so i'm going to click ok here you go the placeholder for pivot table one let me change the name for this pivot table into a meaningful name i'm going to call it sales report and enter and here you go all the columns and all the tables that you have inside your model so let's start by adding a very simple report i'm going to all sales down here you have your two measures i'm going to start with revenue i'm going to drop revenue inside the values i'm going to something like the product 
and I can bring something like category inside the rows and here you go you have a very quick and simple report you have three years sales of 20 million dollars and the breakdown of these sales as you can see accessories bikes clothing and components we managed to summarize 207 thousand rows in only four rows now let's have a look on our pivot table fields and look at the different tables that we have we have one two three four five we have five tables and also if you open any of these tables you will see a very large number of columns if you open the calendar also plenty of uh, columns you can see here a lot of columns so it's uh, like a mess a lot of tables and imagine also if we add more measures here uh, down here in the old sales it will be a very very lengthy list of fields and this will not help you effectively build your report so in order to overcome this one there's a very good tip hide columns from client tool if you want to do so we need to go back to the power pivot window and you can see that in the all sales table i have one two three four five six columns and also i have two measures i'm not going to use any of these first three columns at all i'm not going to report anything by product id or channel id or even region id and also i'm not going to use the date actually no need for the date the quantity itself the column of the quantity itself it will not going to be used uh, anywhere because i have a measure for the quantity if i don't want to add the quantity inside a report i can just use the measure the calculated measure again for the discount if i put the uh, the discount inside a pivot table it will do an aggregation and to be honest no need at all for this aggregation for the discount so practically no need for any columns of these columns so in order to hide all these columns from client tool i'm going to take the first column and then drag by mouse until i end the reach of the table i can just right click and select hide from client tool you will notice that all the columns dimmed it's grayed out meaning that it will never appear inside the pivot table uh, report let's go back to the excel sheet and try to check if you look now at your all sales it's only two measures so and even you can look at the icon now change from a table to this sigma meaning that it contains only calculations or measures so let's try to do the same for the rest of the tables let me go back i can do it from the diagram view so for region id i need only the region name because i'll never do a report with the region id right click and hide from client tool We'll do the same for the channel ID, right click and hide from client tool. For the product, no need for the ID as well, right click hide. And the price also, it's already used inside uh, the revenue calculation, but the price itself, I will never do an aggregation for the price. So right click and also hide from client tool. For the calendar, you know, it's automatically uh, the calendar tables creating a hierarchy, as you can see here. So I'm going to leave the hierarchy, month number, I'm not sure if I'm, go I'm going to report by month number. For sure, I'm going to report by month name, but not, not for month number. So right click and hide from client tool. Day of the week and uh, day of week. Both of them, I'm not going to report by them at the moment. So right click and hide from client tool. By the way, you can just, if you decide to use any of them inside a report, you can just right click and unhide from client tool and it will work perfectly, no problem at all. Let's go back to the pivot table and you'll notice that I have reduced number of columns across all the tables and it's much easier to search your model and create more reports. Let's try to add some more analysis to our report. So I'm going to use the month name in order to look at the breakdown of these categories by month. So I'm going to take categories and put it inside the columns and I'm going to the calendar and from calendar, I'm going to use the month name and put it inside the rows. Two things we need to notice here. First of all, this month representing three years. So I need to add also uh, something to uh, show the years. So I'm going to the year column and right click and add as a slicer and i have my three years here inside a slicer i can select 2016 and i have the report by month the 12 months you can notice here and also by category but i have an issue here inside this report 
you will notice that column of the month, the name of the month is sorted alphabetically. April, August, December, February, up to September. And this is not good at all. I need this to be uh, ordered by the calendar month. So I need to start by January and end by December. In order to do so, I'm going to use a very good feature inside the Power Pivot window called Sort by Column. Let me go back. I'm going to the data view one more time. And then from calendar, I'm going to select the month, uh, the month name column. And from home, you will see that I have sort and filter. And you'll see this icon for sort by column. Just select sort by column. You will see the sort column will be month. And by column will be for sure the month number. So the month number will not be used for the actual reporting. However, it will be used in order to sort the month name column. And then click on OK. Let's go back to our pivot table and all is done. I have January, February, March. The order is OK up to December. If you change your selection, it is working perfectly. Last but not least, I need to add one more year inside my report. As I mentioned at the beginning, I have the data for 2019 and I need to add it inside this model. So I'm going to open uh, the new file for 2019. You can see here the new data for 2019 and I want to add this to my all sales file. Right click, move or copy, create copy. And then I'm going to select all sales, move to end and click on OK. I have here the four years together inside the all sales uh, Excel file. I need to make sure that it is saved and closed. Then going back to our model, right click and refresh. This will refresh the pivot table and it also go back and try to refresh all queries depending on this pivot table. Now all is refreshed, no problem at all, but notice that I have 2016, 2017, 2018 and then blank. If you select the blank, you have the sales for 2019 and you can notice it is correctly uh, organized or correctly uh, summarized by a category however it is not correctly summarized by month or even by year and that's why because the calendar table needs to be updated in order to do so i'm going back to the power pivot window and if you check the dates as i mentioned at the beginning it starts with 1st of january 2016 and ending with 31st uh, december 2018 and this unfortunately is not automatically uh, updated and you have to update it uh, manually in order to do so back to the design ribbon and again to the date table you will see something called update range just click on it you will have the end date uh, mentioned here you can just type 2019 instead of 2018 and click on ok the calendar table will be updated Let's close the Power Pivot window. And here you go, you have 2019 inside your slicer. If you check or select 2019, all is sorted and coming perfectly together. That was all for today. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. And you will find some useful links here. Please check them out. See you next video and bye.